What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Josh Helm here and today we're back at the Black Gold Barnuminium and uh, we've got one of our superintendents here. This is Brandon Flores. Yeah. Uh, so welcome him to the channel. We want to talk a little bit about all the stuff that's been going on here and whether or not maybe you want to build a basement ever again. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been a process for sure. It's been a, a good learning opportunity. I mean, I would do it again. Yeah. I feel Especially like. Especially now, right? Once yeah. you gain the experience, yeah. the knowledge, and getting out here and, yeah. and, and doing it might be a little bit easier the next time, right? Yeah, there's just a lot of details, especially with the concrete we're having to pour and everything, just with the engineering details and stuff that you have to make sure you get right or it could really just throw off the whole, yeah. you know, and, and one thing you guys might not be aware is that we did go through quite a bit of engineering. We had structural, we had uh, foundation, uh, those collaborative uh, efforts going together. Uh, which is always fun, takes a lot more time that way when you got engineers that have to talk to each other. So we wanted to kind of touch base here on this project with Brandon and talk to you a little bit about some of the basement details uh, because I'm a little bit late being here myself and we want to get all y'all caught up so we can keep coming out and showing you a lot more updates on this build. One thing about building a basement in Texas, well, or anywhere really, and everybody will tell you is that you need to get the details right when it comes to water management, uh, as well as flashing and all the things that you need to do around the base. Uh, and we're doing quite a few things to help uh, cover the territory uh, when it comes to concern. First of all, before we even go into that, uh, what do you think about the process of all the forms and everything involved? Uh, it was it was interesting and it was something I'd never really experienced but you know the way they all locked together was pretty cool it was just you know individual sections yeah. and they had just kind of locking pins and and it was a whole system that was designed based on the parameters you know the engineer set yeah and, and uh, so we found a company local yeah. through white cap white cap right who was able to uh, basically rent us out yeah. the forms for building a basement yep. you know and I, I use it I, I describe it like this when you're Building a basement in Texas is about like having sleet and snow and ice on the roads in Texas. Most, most of us aren't really prepared for, <laughs> for it. Yeah. So we're trying to be a little more prepared. So that's the reason why it's a little bit crazier. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of resources in yeah. our area for this type of thing. And there are people that do basements. Yeah. So it's just out of the norm a little bit on the residential side. There was a lot of forms. Like, yeah. I mean, like a, what, a truck load full? Yeah. We had, I mean, almost a full 40 foot, 18 wheeler trailer full of forms. Of forms. Yeah. And then of course, getting the crews out, yep. setting all that up. And, and I'm telling you, it looks like something like we're getting ready to launch a spaceship out of yeah. here. It was pretty crazy. I yeah. mean, there was stuff everywhere. So uh, it takes a lot to get all that ready. Then, you know, four o'clock in the morning, yep. you guys are out here pouring concrete. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about that day? Uh, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It was, it actually went pretty well. Went pretty good. Yeah. I felt, you know, we got everything prepared beforehand and, you know, I came over here and spent a good bit of time kind of going over all the dimensions, all the measurements, all the parameters that the engineer had set, just really trying to make sure we had all the details crossed so that on the poor day, we weren't scrambling, trying to figure that out. And, and that helped a lot okay. just trying to make sure. And, you know, we had the poor set for one day, but we ended up putting it off just, just to verify we were ready. Okay. And so I, it, it it went off pretty good, I mean. Well, now that we got all the, the concrete walls poured, can you tell us what were the steps involved that we needed to do here for, and the, the products that we're yeah. using that we needed to do for all the water management control and things like that on the all around the perimeter of the walls? So we're using all PolyGuard products for our waterproofing system. Um, from their uh, Stretch Flex to their PolyFlow 10, and which you can't can see, behind behind us yeah and then we got our total uh total flex on the bottom here yeah so the basic the these are the basic three pro products we're going to yeah. be talking about uh, you can pretend this is a concrete wall even though it's flopping in the wind a little yeah. bit so brandon made us a mock-up so you guys could be able to see what we did here yeah so this is your your joint down here at the bottom between your footer and where the wall sits. Right. And we showed you guys in a previous video where we had that little keyway where the walls were gonna sit on. Right. And so now you got your wall sitting on top of that keyway and at the joint at the bottom is where 
our total flow. total flow. So tell us about what the total flow is. So the total flow is your bottom layer here and a pretty much it's got a, uh, on this dimple board, it's got a quarter inch, uh, I guess rise you'd gap. call it, gap, gap for the water to flow down. And then on the total flow, it goes down to one inch. And typically in our application, we have this basically right here where the joint of the footer and the wall meets is about where this uh, transitions from quarter inch to one inch. So what this is for is this is where our French drain uh, would be placed at. And this just helps for the, as the water runs down to give bigger gaps for the water to quickly shed away and get into the drain, you know, French drain system and be able to run out. So now, we got a now I know we're kind of not going in steps here because one of the first things you yeah. do is you're going to apply this product. So right. let's tell them what this product is. So this is the Total Flex product here and we kind of have a, a five gallon of it showing. But when you apply this, you have to wait uh, a minimum seven days from the forms being off. And that's just kind of let the concrete cure and some of the moisture to dry out, the moisture content in there. And then uh, you would apply this over. This is a 27 square feet per gallon is your application parameters, which would give you like a 60 mil rating. And based on the, the specifications, you can only apply up to maybe 30, uh, 30 mil per application. Yeah. And then you're going to wait for 24 hours before you can come back and put the other application. So you can do this in two days. Yeah. Uh, you can get this membrane put on and it gives you a 60 mil uh, waterproofing called Stretch Flex Polyguard system. And it can be roll applied. I think you could even spray it. You can it. spray it, right. Mm -hmm. uh, but we rolled it. Right. And you, you get, you know, go all the way down past the joints, right. um, all the way to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you have to do a lot to prep the concrete? Yeah, you have to clean everything of all just kind of visible debris, dirt. You're trying to kind of go through with a with a push broom or a wire brush and kind of scrape all the little imperfections and some of just the little like rough concrete spots, you know, that are, that are on the you know on the wall there. Clean all that off okay. to try to give you as smooth a wall as possible. So, and then once you get all that membrane done, yeah. what's the wait time before you're going to come back? And then what's next? So 24 hours between every application coat. So between your, your application of this, and then you wait 24 hours there. And then from there, it would be the, uh, the BBGF is what it's called, which is the blue barrier gap filler. And what that's for is, you know, in concrete, you got little imperfections and little, little cracks and things voids. that are formed, voids in the concrete. So you would apply that BBGF in those. We don't have any of that right here yeah. in front of us, but so it's kind of like a goop stuff right you just yeah it's it in on. like a like a sausage tube like 20 ounce sausage tubes and you apply it with just like one of those you know caulking guns and a little squeegee and just yeah like scraper and you just apply a glob and then Simi you would just scrape it so similar to like we do our liquid flashing yeah. you know so we yeah, go over product. hit hit the voids yeah and then after that you're ready to go with the next steps here right and then you have to wait 24 hours for that to fully cure before okay. you apply and then that's when you would do your uh total flow and uh, your polyflow 10. So we're gonna start with this polyflow 10 at the bottom, right? Total flow. I mean, total total yeah. flow at the bottom. You're yeah. gonna start with the total flow. And, and this is also where you're gonna, you're gonna have your, mainly you're getting this ready for all your gravel and all this. Right. Now what this is, this is like little dimples, yeah. but as you can see, we've got a piece of it. This is the backside of it. And it's got these little impressions that come out on this side so you can see if i pull it apart a little bit what this is doing is it's making it to where this part of it is protecting the soil uh, from completely taking away the ability to drain here so your soil can back up to this and then this allows water to drain on this side right. so you've got your water protection already here for the basement but this is just making a drainage that pushes water all the way down the side of this wall. That, that way it's eliminating pressure off the sides of the wall. So those are the things that can break down your, your basements is obviously water coming in, but the ground pressure, which is usually comes from uh, the water. For a quick review, so basically we've got our 60 mil stretch flex that goes on first, then we're coming in and we're getting the BBG, which is our blue. Blueberry gap filler. Blueberry gap filler. <laughs> and uh, we're filling all the joints on, on the base, right. as well as all of the voids. Right. And then uh, we're going and we start at the base and we're putting this total flow. Yep. 
uh, which then we're coming over top of that and we're putting this with our polyguard 10 poly flow 10 i mean poly flow 10 is sorry and so all of this is made for water to push down this way and then at the bottom this opens up to a one inch gap up here this is a quarter inch gap giving you plenty of water uh, flow but at the top you already got your water protection there so this is mainly to keep the soil from going in against that and it allows water to come past the soil to remove pressure off the wall so when we get to the bottom brandon let's yeah. show them what we're going to do next so this is uh so we would have a, our french drain system which would be our six inch slotted pipe with the uh, sock over it to help keep out just dirt and debris from getting into the the pipe and clogging it and then we would have our gravel that would be you know underneath and encompassing around so it. so this all gets buried in our yeah our uh, drain rock right so that's kind of what it consists of when you're talking about our our whole system mm -hmm. now uh you actually ran this out yeah. and even hard piped it mm -hmm. as well and you added clean outs right uh under certain certain areas we have clearance on three corners of yeah. the house well which is really nice if you ever need access to that yeah also this all was able to flow completely all the way out right to the other side uh mm -hmm. on a lower point because right. we're setting up on a hill so we're kind of using all of the advantages that we can yeah uh also we we didn't stop there did we we got we've got potential a ways to if water got in the basement yeah so when we did the underground plumbing we actually put a uh sump pump system in there but it also it's a sump pump with a grinder pump for the sewage because we're going to actually pump our sewage up to the main level but it has a it has a grinder pump and then a sump pump in there as well so, so you know that's kind of what's going into this yeah so uh, we got a little bit more to tell you about the basement because it gets even more complex as we for the next steps that are involved but that pretty much covers the the installation methods for our polyguard system mm -hmm. so if you're looking to build a basement i feel like the polyguard is definitely a good system and yep. it's in in our area they have uh manufacturers even in the area mm -hmm. right here too yeah so uh, it's readily available yeah. and and uh, these are also great products they got a lot of other products that could be used uh, outside of just going below grade mm -hmm. All right, well, so here we are. This is kind of what it looks like yeah. now. Ground zero, right? <laughs> this is where all the action has been happening. And right now, you're just seeing a big open hole. But this is obviously our basement, right? right. Yeah. So you're seeing the, the inside of the walls. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want you to take notice is we've got all the embeds right. over here. And Brandon's going to tell us what are these embeds what are those all about? So we're gonna have, uh, we've got engineered trusses being being manufactured there. They're 16 inch open web trusses that are gonna span across the distance here, uh, which is gonna give us our support for our floor, um, which will then have a decked material on there. And then we're gonna pour concrete over top of that. And that's gonna be a steel deck right. that's engineered yep. for concrete, yep. which we're gonna you know, have to come back and pour concrete one more time. Right. Why would we want to pour concrete over top of this? Well, that way you have a finished concrete floor instead of having a steel, you know, cause it's, it's a, it's kind of like a corrugated type. Uh, conf it's called conform deck is what it's called, but it's a roof deck. So you'd have those, you know, grooves coming out. Yeah. And primarily, so the reason why we're pouring concrete is because this is going to be a garage. And that's right. Yeah. So that's what we're, we're building is this is a, a garage over top of a bunker area. Right. And all of this right here, uh, you're going to have kind of another beam that goes this way, and then there will be some that tie into that. So we'll have a heavier beam that crosses there, right? because that will be open on this side, and we'll have another opening on that side, mainly because we're gonna have stairs coming up and down on two different sides of this bunker. Right. So, and then we'll have the garage floor. Then above that, we're gonna have another living quarters or bunkers upstairs yeah right? it's like an apartment type so, setup because ultimately this is like uh a a uh kind of a hunting lodge type yeah. deal that we're building out here yeah. and you've already made quite a bit of progress on the steel you want to tell us about what you've done there as far as spacing and all that you're using for steel yeah so we've got our main uh structure here for the house put up we're using a four by four three eighths tubing uh for our legs here with a 12 by 22 pound i-beam 
And the reason we're doing a 12 by 22 is to match some of the engineer specs for the garage. That way, just all of our steel was the same, you know, structurally throughout. Um, on this, we're using a kind of our standard eight inch C purlins there for our roof to support all that. Now I notice on our end wall, we are using that thicker uh, I-beam there. Yeah. Uh, which in, in your typical standard metal building, they actually lessen the strength of right. those end walls and then you have the thicker ones on the interior walls. Right. Well, something that we always do is we'll put those thicker ones on the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily, it's kind of like, let's, that's your last chance and we have the space there yeah. to build that up. Right. Uh, but for the interior walls, we'll do a little bit closer spacing. Right. And uh, instead of maxing it out and then we'll go with those four by fours, right. allowing that all be built into so the, built into it. the wall and buried into the wall. So do you know what your peak height is? Uh, um, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I think roughly it's about 22, 23 feet to the ridge, okay. to the finish. And what about our slope? Our slope is a, uh, it's a 612 with a 13 foot eave height. Okay, on it. so there you go. Yeah. Now above this area, which we haven't extended the, the steel frame this way yet, yeah. but uh, cause I told y'all to not do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just want to make sure we get our engineer trusses in and everything in yeah. place there first. And but above this area, we're actually going to have another built out right. area. But let's go down here on this other end and show you guys okay. uh, kind of what we're doing over there. So we're here on the west side of the house and wanted to talk a little bit about what we're using for our steel here because it's a little bit out of the norm yeah. from what we do. And we're going to call that out for you guys. Now, Brandon, many of you guys might not know this, but he's been working for us for I don't know, five, six years, something like that now. And uh, he's come a long ways, but he's been involved through every step of growth when it comes to the company. Yeah. Uh, and he's the man out here. So he's in charge of our fabrication team. He's in charge of ordering a lot of these materials. He's been overseeing the whole project from day one. Pretty talented in that sense that he can be trusted with all that, but it's because he's been involved for a long time. Well, we want to talk a little bit about what we're doing here, Brandon. Yeah. So, why do we have such thick steel right here? What's about to happen? Well, we're going to have a dormer that's going to be built up above this. And it's not, it's just going to be for looks. We're going to have about windows that span across the front and the back. It's going to have a 312 slope roof uh, where the house is a 612. But, you know, we're going to have two big, uh, I guess, panoramic type sliding doors here. So we weren't able to do a main frame because our main frame, it would fall right in the middle of that dormer which would be visible from the living side because this is a vaulted ceiling area. Yeah, so basically you're going to be creating an additional f almost footer up there yeah. with the steel so you can attach the the raising the other frame. of the dormer, so to speak. Yeah. What we're calling it. Yeah. It's a raised roof profile is what we got going on up there. Yeah. And uh, this is what you got to do. You got to create this, this support yeah. this way so you can create it that way. Then you can create it that way and then that way. Uh, so it's there's some there's some spanning going on when it comes to the steel, which takes a little bit of extra coordination when you're talking about sizing and everything that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, but the elevation on this is going to be really cool. Uh, we also have the same thing happening on the other side. Right. Uh, now, what is our overall length here on this build? Um, I think from porch to concrete is about 100 and 130 feet roughly to the edge of the garage there. For pretty the edge of the porch, pretty good size. Yeah, length. yeah. I wanted and to about say about forty foot wide, one hundred and twenty. But yeah, it's it's. And then we got a lot of porch. Overall, yeah. under roof, there's like eighty eight hundred square yeah. foot. Yeah. Uh, there's about fifty five, fifty six hundred, I think, on living square footage. Yep. Uh, about twenty five, twenty six hundred square foot of porches. Right. That wraps all the way around this whole thing. We got big porch, and uh, pretty phenomenal when it yeah. comes to what this is going to all entail when it's all yeah. said and done. Yeah. But well, you guys are doing a great job. It looks like we got a lot ways to go. We got a ways <laughs> to go. Yep. Uh, so what's next out here? Uh, next, we're going to be finishing the dormer. The guys actually have the uh, main frames fabbed in the ground over there. And so we'll be getting that all installed, finishing all of our roof purlins with that. And then we're going to start working on our porches. Uh, and then we're expecting the steel for the basement to come correct. in. Uh, within another week or within two. Within a few weeks, yeah. So hopefully that'll be here soon and, and we can start uh, getting our steel guys on that yeah. as well as getting the steel deck on mm -hmm. and pouring concrete one more time out here. This will be our well, third pour. Four, yeah, th fourth <laughs> pour. Fourth pour. 
And then we still have one more for the driveway that we'll yeah. be doing on the end, but that's, you know, some flat work. Wow. But five, yeah, five foundation pours on this, on this pro or five concrete pours on this yeah. project here. And we still got the flat work when it's all done, right? Yep. So six pours. Yeah, five. That's five. <laughs> that. That's five total. And if you didn't think it was enough for the black gold Barnuminium for a great big house, take a look at this big, big barn we got going, at, going on behind us back here. This is our gambrel style. I don't know, it's kind of like something out of Yellowstone, I think. Uh, but check it out, guys. We've got a huge 80 foot long by 40 foot gambrel style barn. I want to show you. Let's go check it out. All right, first thing I can tell you before we go inside here, uh, obviously this is just one big barn, but uh, on the front door, this is going to be a 12 by 12 opening, and then we've got a 10 by 10 opening on the back. Now this is going to have like a sliding doors here on the front. So one of the advantages of being in a, a building like this is I can get a great big span and be able to have a peak height of 32 foot. So we've got spacing of our steel, which is on the 20 foot to 25 foot spans. Uh, and then we've got purlins that run across, but in any other type of construction, you'd have to have big trusses, uh, special engineered type, you know, big trusses to do it that we can do with the steel all day long. And uh, now there's a lot of steel in here, but at the same time, it gives me complete openness to be able to get a 32 foot peak height at the, at the top. As you could imagine, being that high, I could have three stories of construction inside of a barn like this. So now this one here is gonna be one big horse stall is what this is gonna be. We've got all these openings that go on every side. These are gonna be stalls and they could easily come in here and add upper levels for a space like this. Uh, at any given time. Uh, we will be spray foaming in here. We'll be running electrical in here. We actually did a, I showed you guys in a previous video. Uh, this will be kind of a little showering stall for the uh, horses. So we've got this sloped coming into where our drain will be. One thing I can say about the terminations, like we took some extra precautions to close in some of the edges. Whenever you got roof panels coming down against the other roof panels. Our guys were actually uh, cutting our steel to make it web together. And then on this side of it, we put the zip tape just to prepare for spray foam so that we don't have spray foam that gets blown out. Uh, that way it gets sealed up as tight as possible. Uh, that's the only thing, it comes a little bit more difficult when you're trying to get your terminations uh, when you're coming at that kind of an angle. Uh, the same thing at the top. We've got some flashing up at the top. But I don't know. You guys let us know in the comments below. This is one big, beautiful barn. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is the Black Gold Barn Aminium. We've got a lot more to come. I appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel, like, sharing, commenting below. Ring the bell so you can be notified each time we update another video. I'm Josh Helm. I'm Brandon Flores. We're wishing you all the best, and thanks for watching. Texas Bay.